Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Curl Space Program 1.1.2. In this episode, I think we're going to aim for Duna. It seems like a good timing. It's probably a few days off. We could probably time warp a little bit here. And I'm just going to go ahead. Oh, we should probably just check that Valentina's not. Yeah, she'll be fine. Okay, so yes, Duna. And 45 degree angle is what we want between Kerbin here and Duna there. And that that should be. Uh, I'm just eyeballing it. I don't have curve alarm clock in here right now. Otherwise, that'll give a slightly more precise sort of feel for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, if we're just a little bit off, it won't matter too much in terms of delta v. Yeah, that should be okay. So let me get a craft together. Actually, let's quickly take a look at mission control to see what kind of jobs we can do to get credits for this. We do have an Ike contract already, conduct an orbital survey of Ike. So this will be our primary mission. It's very lucrative. So that will definitely get us some good credits for this. But just in case, can we do something else perhaps? Um, Minmus, 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 Kerbin, Ike. Well, um, hmm. Mag magnetometer scan and radio plasma wave scan. What was the one that we have already? Solar particle analysis, magnetometer. Uh, radio plasma. So I think I think I think they can dovetail together. A different company wants uh, basically the same sorts of things. Um, at least 0.42 eccentricity, at least 52 degree inclination. How's that compared to this? This one it doesn't seem to mind which orbit it is in, as long as we get uh, low orbit, high orbit data, a mix of data it wants. So that'll be compatible. Okay, so let's pick this one up as well, and that's pretty lucrative, and uh, there's a science bonus as well. So that is good. Uh, perform a science experiment on FF Lander Minmus Station. Okay, so we need to perform a science experiment over there, but they want it recovered. So we'll have to send somebody over and grab that and come back, or send Valentina back. Um, I think that it says it expires in 15 days, but I guess there's no time limit. I guess we can pick it up then. Eventually, we'll have to bring back some science over there. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so that that is a correct assumption, right? Um, yeah. No time limit. Expires never. Okay. So at some point, we will do that. Biome scan of Minmus, 85%. Oh, uh, well, we don't have a... We haven't put an instrument for that multispectral analysis instrument. We have not added to any satellite, so we would have to do that. We could rescue a Kerbal, but, hmm, well, that would be an extra crew member. Duration 10 years. I don't know if the life support situation will get so bad that the Kerbal will eventually perish or something, but uh, it's giving us 10 years here, so we could do our Duna stuff and then rescue the Kerbal later. Might as well pick it up and hope for the best. There's a mild reputation hit if we fail, but otherwise we're just giving back our advance. Okay, orbital survey of the sun. That's a bit more complicated. Uh, it doesn't say we have to be close. Well, no, it, uh, half of these are low orbit above the sun. I don't recall exactly, actually more than half. This is the only high orbit one. So I don't recall exactly what that entails. Yeah. Let's uh, hold off on that right now. Let's focus on Duna. Okay, so this is the rocket I intend to send over, the Corinth 1. And it's fairly expensive, 74,000. And a lot of that is the payload, 31,000. And that's because of all the scientific instruments we've got here. We've got an orbital telescope. We've got a carbonite detector. We've got a magnetometer boom, the RPWS antenna. We have the solar particle collector there, goo container, science junior, we've got uh, altimetry sensor, we've got the thermometer, barometer. So yeah, uh, I've basically put on as many things as I can that seemed useful. I think there were a couple of instruments I didn't put on. The dynamic albedo of neutrons I didn't put on this time around. Um, it's possible to slap it on. It's another 5,500. Um, it says searching for water, but mainly it says uh, detecting hydrogen. See, uh, here it says collect hydrogen data. 
Here it says detecting hydrogen molecules within specifically searching for water. I don't know. I mean, it could return science as well, so maybe. I guess we might as well. So we've got that on too. Okay, uh, there's the multispectral imaging platform that I haven't got on. And it scans for minerals. I think I'll leave that be for now. That'll be the one that I don't send. Oh, and of course the surface ones I'm not uh, sending over just yet. And this one is supposed to be underwater, so no. No, not going to do that. Uh, we will... Well, I don't have action groups here, so I'll have to do them all manually. That's fine. But after that, it's a 1 kN thruster here. It's got the Venn stock revamp uh, sort of mounting point there. And so that would be a very long burn, but uh, we probably won't need to use that if everything else goes well. That's just uh, in case we need some extra juice for various maneuvers and maybe from moving between Ike and Mars, if we wanted to move back to Mars, sorry, not Mars, Duna, in order to do Duna scanning. Uh, mainly we're going for Ike scanning because of the contracts, but after we do the Ike scanning, we can go back to Duna and do scanning there. Um, here we have an LV-909, and that gives us 3,469 meters per second in five minutes. Uh, the thrust weight ratio is fairly low. Um, actually, that might be a little bit too low, given that we're only spending two minutes on the bottom stage. Actually, we could uh, go longer on the bottom stage. It's got a locked tank, and that's because I was uh, simulating the possibility of returning this, but that's not that big a difference. Uh, how much is it? Um, 360 meters per second. So it could land with that, it's got lander legs, it's got fins, it's got air brakes, it's got parachutes, it's got a controller, it's got the reaction wheel. So we could land this manually, I think, uh, assuming it can be landed at all. Uh, it could have to splash down, for instance, so that's another thing. We do have floats, uh, if I thought that uh, what we needed was to slap some floats on, I think we have those somewhere around here. These are real inflatable floats. I actually, in the original colonization series, I started off trying to launch boosters that uh, splashed down rather than uh, landed. That didn't go so well, so I don't know about that. But we've got airbags and floats as well, should we go to back to that sort of experimentation. But air, uh, stage recovery should be fine with this, uh, 3.1 meters per second. Even if the tanks was full, uh, 5.2 meters per second. So. Yep, that is okay. So we got a locked tank there. And I don't know if 0.74 is good enough up here or if we should shorten that. Possibly shorten it a little bit would be prudent. It's not very efficient anyway at this length. Um, you can see uh, shortening it to 4 minutes instead of 5 minutes doesn't kill a whole lot of Delta V. So 4 minutes it's... Uh, 3,097. If we go to five minutes, it's about 350, 370 more than that. So I guess I'll abandon that 370 and go to four minutes. That'll be safer on the TWR. Okay, so that is the idea. Corinth 1. It's a fine looking rocket. I hate having to put the fins on though, that's really annoying, but I wanted to make sure it's stable. If I can take them off, I will. Uh, the center of lift is still higher than the center of mass, but uh, the gimbling and uh, you know my guidance will hopefully help that out as soon as it empties some tanks. It gets worse. Okay, let's ignore that for now and let's see how it works. <laughs> let's just see how it works, alright? So Corinth 1. SAS on, throttle is up. Everything looks fine. Ignition, and go. Smart ASS. I am now running on a new computer, so we are going up in real time right now. That's nice. Very smooth trajectory so far. I might be able to get away with not having the fins. 
that was just paranoia on my part. Ah, the launch has been going so fast that I didn't turn quickly enough. Yeah, we're going pretty high. On the bright side, that should make the second stage burn much easier. Okay, and uh, we do have a locked tank down there. I'll unlock it now, I guess. Um, we'll throw down, unlock, separate. I don't know how that affects stage recovery. It should be able to detect that there's some, some fuel left there, but we'll see. Okay, let's just separate the fairings here. Okay, and I don't think I need to pitch up anymore. And I don't think I need to start burning just yet either. So let's get the panels out. Okay, that's all ready. It's a good looking probe, I think. Okay, getting ready to shut down here. And that's good enough. All right, 129 by 85, call it. And we've got 2,116 meters per second left in this stage. Plenty to get to Duna with, so let me plot our transfer. As expected, it's not the perfect time to transfer to Duna, but even without a mid-course plane change, we get an encounter. It, admittedly, it's uh, 19,000 kilometers away, so we will have to do a mid-course adjustment in order to get closer. But as you can see, it's a sort of a skew compared to our current orbit. But 1,038 meters per second is fine. So I'm going to have us point at the node. Obviously, that's less than half of the delta V we have in this stage. So this stage will get us into orbit around Duna and probably transfer us to Ike as well. Duna transfer initiated. Let's do some physical time warp. Now transfers can be done with, with epic speed. But gotta be careful still. These things have to be done with some precision. Okay, so what does that get us? Not even an encounter just yet, hold on. Okay, there's an encounter. Probably not the ideal encounter. All right, so uh, 8.5 meter per second mid-course adjustment, not a problem. That's in 181 days. Now, according to this, we have only 109 days of supplies for Valentina Kerman. Let's check up on her, and apparently we can't jump to vessel like this, so uh, I will do it another way. Okay, so Mitko mentioned that the science lab, which is here, has the life support function. So I think if I just move Valentina over into it, let's see if uh, we can just do that with the normal crew transfer sort of thing. There we go, transfer here. Okay, Valentina Kerman has been moved. Now, she's not a scientist, but it should be good enough to start the life support uh, situation. And so Mikko mentioned this, and I think that will increase her... Yeah, yeah, so now she has 364 days of supplies instead of just the 100 or so. So that's good. The, this increases the amount of life support she has. And I don't know, this doesn't have the life support module, so it's just the research lab that has it. Still gotta fix the window shine on it. Okay, so that is a plus. So if we take a look at our probe and how long it's gonna take, well, the mid-course adjustment is 181 days. So already that's pretty good. Now, like taking a look at this little green box, 
we remember that's there because Spore 2 has to fulfill this contract where it's maintaining proper orbit for 41 more days. But that'll be done well before it's time to do the mid-course adjustments, so we'll see that complete. Okay, so time warping, and we should see the 41 more days countdown. That goes out. Okay, uh, some days have passed. Come on. It's not really updating, is it? Hold on, let me close it and open it again. Still says 41 more days. Hmm. Okay, nothing has changed as far as our orbit. Well, let's see. Let's just keep time warping. Keep an eye on Valentina's supplies. Oh, there we go. It has fulfilled the Minmus Magnetics uh, Magnetic Field Environment Survey. So our little probe successfully did that. We're going to have to do the same thing around Ike, but that's going to have to be for 200 days. So make note of that. So we're not going to fill this Ike contract uh, until we've waited 200 days. We will fulfill the other Ike contract, which does not require it to maintain orbit for that long. Okay, so on to the mid-course adjustment. All right, point to node, please. Power is okay. Can we do some interesting experiments here, perhaps? It's a good thing to do. Collect solar particles. I think we can collect like uh, four batches of solar particles. So uh, let's just transmit that one. Yeah, we should still be able to do more. Log visual observations. I don't know if we've done it high over the sun. No, we have not. Still bright. Okay. Transmit that data. Well, I can toggle the magnetometer and we can log that high over the sun okay more science done the goo containers we will say oh that's poking through the solar panel that's not nice I should have rearranged things a little bit uh, the goo container obviously will save for Ike as well as the science junior but pressure data we get 12 points for. I don't know about this albedo of neutrons. Collect hydrogen data. Instrument is only suitable for surface based observations. I don't know if we have to, maybe we have to go onto the surface for that then. I don't know. Maybe it should have been a rover, like the laser experiment. Okay, temperature scan. I think that's it. We don't need a uh, altimetry sensor over the sun, and we're probably too high anyway. Same with the carbonite. Okay, so we've done all the things. Here we go. If it'll condescend to show me what's happening at Duna, of course. We would like to be in line with Ike. We don't want to be inclined. Okay, that's not as low as I like, but it's a start. We can adjust once we get into Duna SOI. Okie dokie. This is all ready. Let's just point uh, normal for the sunlight. There we go. Recharging. And it's in 117 days and Valentina has 184 days. Okay. Now before resupplying Valentina, I might want to unlock like um, unlock the docking ports, the larger docking ports. Now that we've got all the extra science. And if we do that, maybe we'll send an engineer with uh, electric screwdriver and that engineer can attach the better docking ports onto the station. We have a huge master plan here. Instead of just resupplying Valentina, we'll be a little bit busier on that mission. Okay, let's get a better look at what's happening. 
There's Duna. Okay, well, there's an Ike encounter. Let's see how close we can get. Oh, so it would be nicer if it pulled us into a lower orbit. Yeah, keep going, keep going. The closer, the better on this one. 89. Oh, it's going up. Okay, we'll take that. I mean, we'll get low over Duna, high over Duna, and then we'll head on over to Ike, so down there, get into orbit, do the things. Okay. So, let's do some experiments. Now, we can't do carbonite detection just yet. We'll have to get into real orbit around Duna first, but do visual observations just above Duna's lowlands, so that's going to be biome dependent. And that had a lot of uh, science involved. 35 science for the magnetometer scan near Duna. Okay, RPWS. 63 science near Duna. Transmit. Getting science left and right. Temperature. 28 signs for transmission, not even recovery. Not that recovery of thermometer data should be really really higher valued but whatever I don't know hydrogen data yeah I think that's on that was wasted on here I shouldn't have put it on last minute fail okay well we definitely need to recharge our electric charge is a little bit low so let's not do anything more for a little bit Okay, now regaining power. Okay, so the sun must be out for us. Yes. Okay, so now doing observations of, well, a very dark Duna right now. But we got 30 signs for it. Transmit. And log magnetometer. Transmit. Radio plasma wave data. 45. Transmit. There we go. Okay, we're practically in orbit already. What were the parameters it wanted? This one just wants any old orbit, but the one that requires us to stay in orbit for 200 days wants us with 0.42 eccentricity and at least 52 degree inclination. So this is not enough inclination. That'll be good for the carbonite scanning and everything anyway. We'll get into a mostly polar orbit Okay, it's satisfied with this sort of orbit, but maybe a little bit lower. Let, let's see how low we can go while keeping the eccentricity good enough. I should put a little eccentricity. Oh, there. It's no longer good enough. So we'll go prograde. We'll lift it up. Could have just had, like, uh, well, that orbit info doesn't have eccentricity. Not normally the most important thing. Just in the case of these sorts of contracts. Okay, there we go. Maybe a little bit higher just for buffer. Okay, 282 by 30. And we're still on this stage, so I mean, we really didn't even need the one kilonewton thruster thing. Okay, visual observations. Transmit. Uh, we should, we'll start the carbonite scan after doing everything else. The solar particles need to be high over Ike, so I'll save that, but um, I'm going to observe Mystery Goo. I'll observe all the things here, and uh, we'll keep the data. Oh, no, we should transmit this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, was the science junior supposed to be done low or high? High. Oh, and low. But we don't have to do both. I think uh, missing one is fine. We might as well do the... the maybe we should do the low one. Now nah, we'll do the high one because we'll have light and we can transmit it immediately. Okay, very good. I don't feel comfortable transmitting anything else right now, but looks like we fulfilled some stuff. Yeah, we got one of those. Every little bit of uh, scientific data we do fulfills part of those contracts and gives us a little bit of funds and sci extra science. Okay. Oh, uh, I think it refunded our Donnie. I didn't mean to delete that. I wanted to check on our stage recovery. 
but I accidentally deleted it too quickly. Huh, it's like clearing a f uh, email folder. Okay, out to high Ike orbit. The materials bay. 43.8 science, even without recovery, so that's not bad. Let's transmit that. The goo feels right at home here. Only 15 science. We'll definitely have to recover that. Uh, not from here, but from some other thing. Uh, collect solar particles. Only 8 science, but it fulfills part of the contract, which probably gives us some bonus in terms of science. Okay, the magnetometer. And finally, the RPWS, not finally actually, we need to do the thermometer and barometer. Oh, we should start the altimetry sensor. We don't have any data to analyze yet. Why, why is the contracts blank? I know I haven't done everything. It's just trying to hide the stuff from me. Okay, um, lots of contract complete here. But it's not showing me my contract, so I can't see how far along we are. I mean, at the very least, we need to keep this in order for 200 days. It needs to still have that on there. So let me go back to Mission Control to see how far along are we and whether I'm missing something as far as the, con uh, as far as the sciences we were supposed to do. All right. Well, first, uh, let's take a look at this. It says Explore Ike. Achieve orbit around Ike. Um, th it doesn't say that we have to do it with a new vessel. Transmit or recover science data from space around Ike, land on Ike. Well, I mean, we got to do that eventually anyway. We might as well pick it up. Um, they don't seem very interested in Duna, huh? They're interested in everything else. I mean, they're interested in Ike, but not Duna. It's weird. Um, okay, they want stuff around Gilly. Simple recon scan, even. What do they think is there if they want reconnaissance? Uh, but we can pick that up. Eight years is fine. Okay, but taking a look, survey of, okay, so this one, do not need to remain active throughout the period specified, uh, okay, 200 more days, we've completed, uh, see, we've got all these complete, that was what I was wanting to check, so those are all complete, that's complete, it's just the 200 more days that is not complete. Um, it looks like, if we look at the archives, the, this, this is the Minmus one. Okay, we've completed the orbital survey of Ike. So we got lots of funds. In fact, look, we've only almost got 6 million funds there and we're at 1,200 science. So that's excellent. The one thing we didn't do was the material study from low orbit above Ike. I did the high orbit above Ike instead. Okay, so that is a wonderful success as far as Ike is concerned. and. As soon as we complete the 200 days in orbit around Ike, uh, once they give us some Duna contracts, we can send it over to Duna and fulfill them there, since the magnetometer scan and radio plasma wave scan can be done repeatedly, obviously. So it's an excellent situation. Let's take a look at the tech tree now that we have all the science. There's our docking ports. Specialized construction. Okay, that is the priority. Docking ports. Um, these are these are infernal robotics parts. That's just a retexture of them, reworked. That's the original type. That could be interesting. I always liked infernal robotics parts. the The downside to them is that they're really glitchy uh, if you uh, go between versions, and we saw that with the old colonization series. Supersonic flight. We could uh, make some interesting space planes with these parts. I don't know if uh, space planes is a way to go here. And then we've got Gorsat, which is an irradiance scan. Well, some science. Okay, I'll unlock that. And then we'll just go in reverse order up. Um, do we really, I mean, because I don't really feel like we're desperate to get the mainsail or any other rocket engine. Separatrons. Okay, well, all right. I want my separatrons. Separatrons are not. I don't care about the rest of this stuff, but it's been really irritating not having separatrons at all. So I'll get those. 
And these connector ports, probably important. Let me get those. That would leave us with better landing systems and probably better pods. I think that's a good idea. Pods. Better landing systems. Advanced landing. No, I think I'll, I'll wait on that. We, we can unlock one more technology and it's entirely likely that I will discover along the way that I really, really need something and then I'll unlock it then. Okay, so what is the next thing we need to do? We could rescue that one Kerbal. That is one thing we could do. Or we could uh, get set up for the resupply for Valentina and also check out whether we can attach a docking port. I think that's what I'm going to do. All right, so here we are with the Delphi Crew Rotation Pod, and this carries two Kerbals. It weighs 1.8 tons, which is a little bit hefty, but there aren't too many two Kerbal pods. And I've got a Probodobodyne Hex up there uh, underneath the batteries, and of course a docking port there and a nose cone, which will be dropped off after we get high enough. But uh, in the pod we have Bill and Alton, so no pilot necessary because of the Probodobodyne Hex. Uh, we needed a separate heat shield, there is a heat shield under there. So the goal is for Alton to go into the research lab and start researching, while Bill will affix the docking port to the station, actually two docking ports, they're in here, in this container. Actually we'd have to affix the docking port to the station first, and then dock because it doesn't have this size docking port right now. So that is an uh, interesting plan. After that we've got the life support tank which has the supplies that we will transfer to the station. This is all the fuel and uh, an LV-909 as our go-around engine. Uh, solar panels, mop propellant, and of course thrusters. So that is like that. And then we have a poodle stage here, so that's a poodle, and so that will be our completion of Kerbin orbit stage, 1,300 meters per second, and that's expendable. The bottom stage, as usual, we are attempting to recover, and so parachutes, and four skippers. Lots of thrust at the start, we probably don't have to keep the throttle up uh, full, all, uh, at, well, after we leave the launch pad, we should probably throttle down a bit. But otherwise, that is the configuration. And we even have separatrons now. We've got separatrons right there. So that the first stage will clear the second stage safely without getting blasted by the poodle. Otherwise, it's a pretty spare system. And as far as the life support we're sending over, for two crew members, it's 138 days. And of course, the research lab gives us the additional life support boost, so it's not quite so dire. 138 days would otherwise be a really short amount of time in Kerbal, with respect to Kerbal stuff. Okay, so that's the idea. Oh, uh, I need to pack a screwdriver. Not a sonic screwdriver, just a normal screwdriver. Well, an electric screwdriver, that's pretty good. And why don't I pack two? Okay. Well, that is the plan. Let's see how it goes. Uh, obviously, if the rocket has any problems, the pod has parachutes. Oh, we got a little thing here. Achieve orbit around Ike is complete. Oh, okay, yeah, we picked up the Explore Ike contract and it finally detected that we do have something in orbit around Ike. I don't know why we can't see Alton, Kerman. Hold on, uh, internal view. This is the pod. Uh, I don't know where Alton is actually. This is a weird EVA view. Okay, so that's a little bit troubling. Um, I'm, I'm afraid if I go to the IVA view there, it'll be glitched out anyway. So let's leave that off for now. SAS on, throttle is up. They are already producing mulch. Mm. Okay, all right, everything else seems fine. Ignition, and launch. Yeah, that's some get up and go right there. You'll 
no, no fins. I'm trying out no fins this time. Just letting the gimbling handle it. Let Smart ASS figure it out. Be patient with the oscillations. Yeah, I went with four skippers, but because I didn't feel that three was really enough, but maybe and three looks awkward too. But maybe three would have been better. Anyway, we are trying to recover it, so it's not like a complete waste or anything. There we go. Well, okay, it's actually pitching down. No, zero, we fine. Bill and Alton. Okay, separation. And ignition. Okay. I'll try and remember to actually check where the stage recovery recovers that. Okay, uh, we'll let this stage re-enter even though we're dumping 228 meters per second. So, set. And ignition. I should put a communication device on here, I didn't. Okay, that should be good enough. Extending the panels. We have an excellent Mimus encounter, it's really easy. Burning out of the descending node here, immediately got an encounter, 175 kilometers, looks like, if we do it right. Node. Uh, 925 meters per second, let's call it. Which should leave us with enough delta V to get into orbit around Minmus. Uh, the bomb propellant will help us dock, and then we should have enough to come back to Kerbin. That's the goal. Okay, getting ready for shutdown. Let's see what's going on here. 110 kilometers, that's excellent, so, and we have sort of a free return sort of thing, that's fine, okay, let's go over there, we've got 562 meters per second, I don't know if that's quite enough to get into orbit around Minmus and to be able to come back without refueling, okay, wait, we've got messages, uh, the poodle stage was destroyed, but the all-important skipper stage with four skippers on it has been recovered. Terminal velocity of 5 meters per second. And out of a stage value of 49,640, we got 41,000 back. Uh, the recovery percentage 82.6% because of distance. Okay, well, we continue. I, I do want to try out more adventurous recoverable schemes instead of just relying on stage recovery. But it is darn convenient. And right around here, we're going to tilt our orbit, get into orbit. Gotta leave it loose like that until we can really see what the effect of everything will be. Because it's not really showing an encounter, but at some point during the the retro burn, we should get an encounter of some sort somewhere. There we go. You can see the encounter situation developing. I'll go for. Oh wait, wait. It stopped doing it. Um. All right. Let me boost up again because I want that encounter I want a clear encounter 
Don't want any shenanigans. Right there. I'll take it. I'll take it. It's within render distance. Okay, let's time warp. If we take a look at our life support situation, it would appear that Valentina has 56 days left. We have 128 days for two people in the pod. So all is well. There it is. Yeah, so we have to rendezvous with it, but we can't dock to it yet because it doesn't have the right docking port. Okay, matching velocities. Okay, well, now let's hold here. Where exactly do you put the docking ports? Very important question. I could put one on the tail, but I've got two docking ports available, and that was just in case I wanted to put them on the sides like here and here, but I feel like maybe I want to put it on the tail instead and I'll uh, hold on to one. It doesn't really have room to store it though. That's a little bit annoying. I really need to attach a KIS container module onto this. Okay. I think, yeah, I'll just put one on the end. That way it'll be more stable anyway than having something this big hang off one side. Valentine the Kerman refuses to work? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, why? Oh, suddenly the hab is not a happy place for her? Oh, when did it turn negative? Why is it negative 59 days? I don't remember it turning negative for her. These guys are going to be happy for 224 days. Home for three years? I thought she had more time before she got upset with the hab. Maybe it's only when they approach that uh, she gets upset or something, I don't know. Maybe it's because she's preparing a party for them. Well, about... Okay, about 60 millimeters per second. Uh, Bill, let's... Uh, let's get on with this. EVA. Okay, Bill. Inventory, inventory, I don't, he can't carry a docking port like this, yeah, um, so, equip, we don't need to actually attach it there, um, Okay, hold on. Uh, space, let go. Can you... Get that thing? Uh-oh. No, 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 no. Down, down. Oh boy. It's drifting off. Maybe I, I should have attached it. Didn't I equip that thing? Yeah, it's equipped. How is this going to work? Set as target, maybe? Oh, he, we went past. Okay, I'm, I've already derped. <laughs> uh, it's all gone bad. Where the heck did the station go? Wow! We drifted off really far away suddenly. How do I... How do I do things with it? No, that's not what I wanted to do. I did not want to disassemble it. Man, do I not have the skill or something? It's supposed to give, you know, grab options and stuff like that. Right? Right? How about, how about these? No, it only gives disassemble part. Hold on. Let me get Bill back into the pod. The 
figure this out. Um, I need to see about crew skills and stuff like that, I guess. Doing EVAs in real time is really hard. I need lag. Oh, and then there's that. Come on. Clicking all the things. I think I'm gonna have to rethink this mission, but what happened to KAS? Grab. Uh, okay, board. Okay. So, whoa. Why, why is my Delta V. Hold on. Why is the Delta V going down? What? Why is the Delta V going down? Why am I getting heavier? I thought it was supposed to be a KOS thing. Do I have KOS in here? If so, why hasn't this manifested before? I do have KOS in here. I bet it's a bad version. Shoot. Okay, well I'm gonna delete KOS. Okay, so good news. It looks like the vessel mass is back to normal. It is no longer going up. Uh, just to be clear, KOS has been updated and the updated version does not have that problem. So do not worry, um, you can use KOS. The newest version will not have any mass bug or anything like that. It just so happened that I had thrown it in here without thinking earlier with some plan to use it and uh, did not update it because I forgot. But uh, the problem with uh, KS is still a thing. So I need to figure out why Bill Kerman was not able to uh, pick up that that piece, the docking port. Now it could be that the docking port's too heavy, but then he wasn't able to pick up the RCS thruster block or anything like that either, and that should have been possible. So I think it must be a skill issue. Uh, obviously, Bill Kerman is not currently skilled. Yeah, so maybe that's the thing. But I don't remember that being a problem, but then again, I haven't done it in career mode. The only times I've used that KAS feature, I think, has been in uh, in Sandbox. But my memory is a little bit rusty because I've got all these series and I've done all sorts of things in all sorts of ways. So, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.